we can't talk about interior design without talking about the form of the homes. And there are two kinds of homes I want to look at. I want to look at the palaces, the upper crust, but I also want to look at the common man. Oftentimes those homes are overlooked and yet they're particularly important because that's how most people are living and it may give you some ideas that you wouldn't have otherwise. So let's start with our Egyptian palace and we're actually looking at a new kingdom, a Marna period palace. So very specific but this is going to be representative of a lot of palaces that you would see in ancient Egypt. Now let's look at a basic floor plan and what you'll notice is it's not so much a palace as a house as it is a large government, basically a big government structure. So when you're looking at these floor plans, the solid black lines represent walls, uh, squares or circles represent columns, any place that's gray generally represents something that we believe would have been there but isn't at present. And when we look at in the center, we have a massive pool. Now that is not necessarily a swimming pool. That is oftentimes water collection. Sometimes it exists as a reflecting pool, as something that would bring comfort to the people inside because the people inside are not getting out very often. It's a palace. Who lives in a palace? Well, princes, princesses, kings, etc., pharaohs, etc. And so they're not out. They're not walking down to the Nile River to go take a dip. They're pretty much stuck inside. We see a variety of rooms. Now, we don't know what all the rooms were for, but you'll notice they're not terribly large rooms all the time. Some of these would have been reception halls, etc. You'll notice farm animals would have been inside the palace. Now, you think, wow, that's... That's crazy, but of course, these would be sacred animals in ancient Egypt. So you would have animals that were specific for sacrifice to various gods. You would have a court with an altar. Of course, in a lot of early civilizations throughout most of the classical world, the pharaoh, the king, the emperor, whoever's in charge, also acts as high priests. So it makes sense that they're going to have a specific altar in that area. The large courtyards are there because we're in the middle of Egypt, so they don't have to worry about a lot of rain. In fact, ceilings become rather difficult issues to deal with when you're in the desert. You don't really need it except to try and keep in cold air, which is, well, difficult when you don't have air conditioning. So as we look at this, and I apologize, it's in uh, foreign language, but here we see a different recreation. Oftentimes, there would be a channel or something that would allow them access to the Nile, although generally not directly on the Nile. Uh, here we see an idea again of these rooms and centers. Some of them we don't know that they had ceilings over. So you see there's very few areas that are actually private. And the areas that are there are surprisingly small. They're subdivided quite a bit more than what we would do today. Inside would have been surprisingly simple. Would have been stone, probably covered in plaster, and then painted in a fresco technique. The Egyptians use a fresco technique called bon seco, S-E-C-C-O, and it's basically painting on dry plaster. It's not true fresco. This is not Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. As we look at, you would have statues, but you'll notice very sparse furniture. Some of the shapes are off in this recreation, but it does give you an idea of how simple things would have been. And it's simple because furniture is expensive. Wood has to be imported primarily into Egypt. The walls would have been covered in murals and paintings. The columns would have been covered in murals and paintings. This is probably a later uh, recreation of something from the Greek period or the Roman period. But again, it's far simpler than what we would expect. All of those silks and ideas that we have with Egypt actually come after the Egyptians proper. That comes during the Ptolemaic, uh, when the Greeks take over ancient, Greece, ancient uh, Egypt. Excuse me. It's not something that they would have had commonly. But let's look at the common man's dwelling, the common home. And this becomes a lot trickier. These were built of mud brick. And the problem with building with mud brick is, of course, it falls apart over time. It's not a very permanent substance, not like the palace is made of stone. 
So these are common homes for the working class, generally speaking. And here we see a recreation. And what we have is a small indoor space, a large courtyard, which would have doubled as the kitchen oftentimes. The oven would have been outdoors. You don't really need the heat indoors in ancient Egypt. By using mud brick, what they're doing is they're actually capturing heat. It's very efficient at that. So it captures the heat during the day and then radiates it at night, keeping you warm inside. When it's particularly hot, they would congregate on the roof, using that as sleeping quarters uh, and general living space. The indoors and outdoors, you'll notice, is a very interesting mix because there's actually less indoors than there is outdoors. It's very much the opposite of what we would expect today. Now, they also use something called a mulquaf, and this is a wind catcher, basically an opening in the roof that would be faced towards the prevailing wind and funnel the breeze into the house itself. It acts as a form of air conditioning. It keeps the air moving inside in a time when you don't have electric fans and other things to keep the air moving. By the way, in this case, we're looking at a model of a home which would have been buried with someone as a spiritual home in the afterlife. Now, you also had simpler structures, single story structures, where you just have the first floor and the roof. This would have been more common in urban areas, although you do see them in very, very rural areas on occasion. You see that mud brick construction here. We would term it uh, adobe uh, construction in the United States if we were in the desert southwest, but it's basically the same thing. The only wood here is being used to help support the roof, which with a staircase and a series of beds, you can see is used as living quarters just as much as the interior. Now, the thing to remember in ancient society and really everything up through about the Victorians, about turn of the century, nine, end of the 19th, early 20th century, is most people use their homes to eat and sleep, and that's it. You don't entertain in your home, you don't hang out and watch Netflix in your home, etc. You spend most of your time out. You would spend it in pubs, you would spend it in uh, public places, public squares, but you're rarely ever home, and you would have multiple generations living in these homes. And here we see side-by-side a side-by-side -side house using a common wall, very common in an urban area. We have a very small entrance. Uh, as you can see here, it's maybe six feet across. The kitchen, maybe six feet by about three feet. So very, very small. The court, the larger area, is even in this case quite small, maybe 15 by 15, maybe something the size of your living room nowadays. We see a side room, we see a main room. Now, we don't know the purpose of these rooms. They could have been bedrooms, they could have been quarters, they could have been uh, multi-use rooms. And of course, the roof would have acted as a room as well, something you can take advantage when you happen to live in the desert. Now, imagine living in this space, as small as it is, maybe five meters across by five, I mean, we're talking 25 square meters we're talking a fairly small space. Now imagine living in that with your grandparents, your generation, and your children, which would have been very common. That's why they're using these rooms for multiple purposes. There's no such thing as a living room because that room might be in the evening someplace that you roll out a sleeping mat and you sleep because many people don't have beds. And then in the daytime, it's used for perhaps entertaining, perhaps it's used for storage, perhaps you're putting animals in there. There's any number of different purposes for these. So do not take your modern view and apply it to these homes. Your idea of a home is very, very different from the ancient world.